he's throwing in Watchtower publications, like like books and magazines and all that stuff. And he's like, this is his bug out bag. And oh, thank goodness I've got the young people ask book. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, welcome back to the channel, guys. In today's video, we are going to be uh, doing another, I would I would say our third review of a uh, what I'm calling a in-documentary, which is a play on words of indoctrination and documentary, thus in-documentary. Um, so I'm hopping onto JW.org, and I'm going to be watching one of their videos where they basically try and uh, tell people, you know, how you should be more considerate of those around you while they're here on earth, you know, and still living and stuff like that. So, you know, a good, good point. Um, but I just want to know when in the video you think my mind changes on how good the message is. <laughs> Cause I thought I was actually going to agree with Watchtower for a moment. I was going to be like, wow, they actually put out something that makes sense, right? Nope. They did not disappoint. This organization never disappoints me when it comes to letting me down. <laughs> so... Um, I'm going to go ahead and jump on a JW.org and we will get right into this. Thinking back, I thought I knew what it meant to show love, but I had a lot to learn. Come on. Your back is for hours. You need sleep. <sighs> Just five minutes. Ben? Carl's been calling. You really should pay him another visit. Chris says he's not doing too good. I will, I promise. Just as soon as I get past this talk. I'd known Carl and Grace since I was 17. <laughs> Carl had been my spiritual dad. He was always there for me. And with him being in and out of the hospital, I tried to be there for them, but I'd just been so busy. Okay, obviously you're you're all adults, so you know what's going on. They're basically setting it up to where, you know, um, Carl, this guy Carl and his life has been you know, like his his spiritual mentor and um, basically a, a big influence on getting him into the organization, getting him baptized and, you know, moving up in the ranks, so to speak. So I just want to point out here, though, that they are they are making a point to say that his friend Carl is in the hospital. It looks like he's sick with some kind of cancer um, and that he is not reaching out to his spiritual mentor because he's so busy. Now, I want you to watch these next couple of parts because you see him at work, but the very first scene was him working on, on a talk for the meetings, okay? Now, some of the other scenes that you're gonna see depicted here, um, he's actually preparing um, like serv field service reports and uh, more things for the Kingdom Hall. So I just really wanna point out before we get any further into this, because again, I. I thought that this video was, I was going to actually agree with Watchtower. I was going to be like, good job, Watchtower. You actually taught something correctly. And you told people, hey, don't get so wrapped up in being busy that you forget to love those around you, especially those who are close. But all of the reasons that he can't, can't reach out to Carl because he's so busy, 70% of them are coming from the burdens placed on him by this false religion, by this cult. They're field service reports, getting ready for talks, being an elder, getting together service uh, meetings, all of that is pulling him away from his responsibility of loving others. So the org is literally the reason why he's not able to do the thing that they're trying to teach you to do, which is, you know, love those around you. Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox. We'll keep going. It seemed like so many new responsibilities. 
hit me all at once. Brother Capra, do you have a second? Hey Kev, uh, maybe a little later, okay? But I figured once my schedule freed up, I'd make more time for everyone, including Carl. What I didn't realize is how quickly time can run out. Grace said no one could know he'd pass so suddenly. And not to beat myself up about it, but I knew I would lament that decision for a long time. I never again wanted to miss an opportunity to show love. Brother Capra, do you have a... Okay, so now we're about to get a compilation of, of him deciding to pay more attention to the people around him and not be so busy. But again, I just want to point out the message of the video is be loyal, show love to those who are close to you. Don't be preoccupied, so preoccupied with being busy that you miss out on life, right? That's kind of the, the vibe I'm getting from the video. And then you see several scenes of him being busy. Well, what did we see? Work. Okay. He was some sort of tradesman. He's an electrician, something like that. Um, which is normal when you're a Jehovah's Witness because you don't typically, they discourage any sort of higher learning or education. And again, I'm not downplaying electricians. They actually make really good money. And guess what? Everyone needs electricity. So anyways, he's an electrician. But then the next scene, he's in, in an elders meeting. The next scene, he's putting up field service reports when he's like, get out of here, kid. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if they if they had another example. Anyways, I'm just the reason I'm pointing this out is because, again, a lot of the reason that he's so busy is because of all of the work that he's doing for the Watchtower. Let me just lay it out for you real quick if you're not familiar or if you're not Jehovah's Witness. When I was in, they've actually reduced it now, but when I was in, we had a Tuesday night Bible study. Okay, then so basically on Monday, you were studying for the Tuesday night Bible study. And then Thursday, we had uh, Theocratic Ministry School. So basically on Wednesday, you were getting ready for Thursday, right? And then uh, Friday was kind of a free day. It, that's if you weren't getting ready for field service on Saturday, which you should definitely do when you're a witness. Um, and then Sunday was the public talk and watchtower uh, study. So, I mean, how many days do you actually not, are you not doing something for the watchtower? Like one, maybe, maybe one when you're not doing busy work for them, right? So the, again, the reason that this guy was so preoccupied was because of being in this high control group. It, was, it's, it wasn't his job that was preoccupying him. It was literally the watchtower. So, all right. The video is about to take a turn for the worse. <laughs> again, I was actually very proud of watchtower. I was like, wow, a wholesome, heartfelt message. This is something we can all get on board with. Why don't you just tell me when you think it turns? All right, here we go. Hey, Kevin, how's it going? I realized that learning to show love more fully then would help prepare us for what lay ahead. Eventually, showing love would call for even greater sacrifices. I'm so glad that I never gave up in learning to show love and that Jehovah never gave up on me. Now, when I see Carl, 
I have centuries of happy memories. Centuries of showing him and all of my brothers and sisters loyal love. My goodness, where do I, I always say this, where do I begin? Okay, I'm just going to try and keep this composed. First, we see he takes a, he takes a, he has a change of heart after his, his friend unfortunately passes away. And I actually, I was like, kudos to the guy, like he had a tear running down his face. Um, the, so the acting was actually fairly good in that part. So I was like, oh, okay, spot on. Um, I mean, it was, it was sad. Like his friend just suddenly passed away. Right, so he has this change of heart. He's now going to pay attention to the people around him and be more mindful and not not so preoccupied and busy. All right, good message. And then it's like it it told me to really focus on, or it taught me to really focus on the things that are important. And then you see them holding up like a a publication from the Watchtower. I, again, never once do I see them holding the Bible. They're always holding the magazines or they're holding the book, right? And then it takes this very strange turn. It's actually really, really funny. Like, it's like for things that we're going to have to endure in the future. So they're warning witnesses now. Okay. You are going to be arrested. The government is going to come after you if you're a Jehovah's Witness. So it takes this weird turn where he's like, I have to show love in the future. And then you see him, ha he has like this small duffel bag and he's, guess what he's throwing in there? He's not throwing God's word in there. He's not throwing the Bible in there. He's throwing in Watchtower publications, like like books and magazines and all that stuff. And he's like, this is his bug out bag. And oh, thank goodness I've got the young people ask book. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. And then he's like, he's like typing in this email. I'm sure they have this like secret email that they're going to send out to all the other witnesses when the police start coming at him, right? Because the government's just going to like hammer down on witnesses. And uh, listen, I'll get to some real life examples of, of witnesses being arrested uh, in just a moment. But so they have this weird scene where like, you know, he's trying to send an email and then they smash open the door. And OK, again, another set of kudos for Watchtower. They actually had one or two fake guns in the video. I mean, the bunker video I watched, it was just a bunch of dudes in like attack vest um, a tactical vest and they had no weapons. They just had like gloves and riot gear on, but no guns. Like, <laughs> like there's no police force that doesn't have weapons. But anyways, they actually had two fake guns in this video. So kudos there. A uh, little more realism. That one cop was jacked. But anyways, so they get him down on the ground and they're like, where are they? Where are the other witnesses? I know you know where they are. <laughs> and then he ends up in this weird prison cell with like 14 other dudes, which I haven't seen a prison cell like that before. I'm pretty sure it's like two per room. Um, but anyways, there's that. And he's like, he's like wiping a guy's forehead or taking care of him or something like that. And I wonder if they let him grow that mustache or if there was a fake mustache that they put on him. I guess we'll never know. But it's supposed to teach you, okay, you're just, you're going to be arrested. Be fearful of that. Make sure you stay a Jehovah's Witness because if you get arrested and you go to prison and then you die you'll get to have this feast at the end. Okay. Um, here's my problem there. First of all, if you are following the wrong Jesus, as in Jesus, Michael, the archangel, the, the, the fake Jesus of Watchtower, you know, one of the false Christs that even Jesus himself warned about and the apostle Paul did too. If you're following the wrong Jesus, you aren't going to be feasting in the afterlife. That's all I have to say. Um, I would just, I would try and let Jesus tell you who he is. And I would open up God's word in a real Bible and I would encourage you to pray for truth. Okay. That would be my suggestion there because when you do have actual truth, when you actually have the truth of scripture and you know who the real Jesus is, then when you watch stuff like what I just watched and what you guys just watched, it really makes you cringe. I mean, I, I would also say that people who aren't programmed, it makes them cringe too. But guys, this is not it. This is not the truth. This We have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love and of sound mind. 
So anytime we're walking around and we're just constantly in fear of being, you know, arrested or whatever, I mean, okay, I was going to say, yes, there are witnesses who have been arrested and they are just trotting it out, right? And where are they being arrested? Specifically from what I know, they're being arrested in Russia, right? Okay, I've literally had my mom use as an example the persecution of um, Jehovah's Witnesses as a barometer, as a sign that they are the truth, right? They're the truth because they're being persecuted. I said, mom, there's been, there's been Catholics who have been persecuted. There's been Muslims who have been persecuted, Mormons. I mean, just because they're arresting Jehovah's Witnesses in Russia doesn't mean that you're, that this organization is the truth. I mean, they arrest, they arrested Russian Jesus for goodness sakes. You know that guy who wrote the Third Testament and, and lives up in a mountain and literally has like this like little perfect Pleasantville? Yeah, Russia ar arrested Russian Jesus. Once a patrolman heard the word of God tell him that he was his son and he wrote the Third Testament. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> but just because they arrested Russian Jesus, like Russian Jesus, doesn't mean that he's the way, the truth, and the life. It doesn't mean that he has the truth just because he's being persecuted. It just means that he was running a cult, and Russia also happens to recognize that Jehovah's Witnesses are a cult, and I'm sure that they have some reasons for arresting them. I don't know. I'm I'm not on board with the government arresting people for their faith, okay, or, or their non-faith. That's not a crime. So anyways, um, wow, that kind of went every different direction, so I'm glad you guys are still here, and um, if you are, I want to thank you for watching. I always appreciate your comments down below. Most of the time, you guys have me rolling on the floor laughing, and I love your points. So please feel free to sh uh, share your comments in the comment section below. And um, be looking forward to some more in documentaries in the future. All right, guys. Thank you so much, and God bless.